Me in the Word, if you would, please, to Genesis. Genesis chapter 39. We're going to kind of go back in time a little bit and uh, look at what the Word has to say. And, and uh, there's a phrase called Josephing. And uh, that's a, a phrase that uh, simply means going through. And so we're going to look at what the Word has to say here today and uh, go over some things. And uh, how many know that life can just have some crummy circumstances sometimes? You know, how many know that returning to victory is something that just seems to feel like something that we really need? Amen? And, and, and so there's always opportunity to look. And you know, one of the problems with a mirror, we just refinished our bathroom, and uh, we hung a nice mirror up in the, in the upstairs, and the girls wanted a big mirror so they could see what's going on, I guess, in their face and their hair, and they wanted big bright lights, and they wanted all of that. And the problem with the mirror is it shows you what's going on today, right now. And the problem with just looking at today is sometimes we look at today, but we're hindered by the past. And so if we're going to look at the Word today. The good news with the Word is that the Word will reflect what you, not what you were, but who you are. The Bible says, in Christ, we're a new creation. Amen? A new creation. The Word says that old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so it's very, very, very important. And so... We're going to look at the word here in just a moment, and we're going to see that where Joseph was a man that had a dream. He was kind of the favorite son. He was a bit of a snitch, but nevertheless, he was a favorite son. He lost his mom at a young age, and so his dad kind of liked him. And uh, the, the coat of many colors, some of that, it's not a myth. He did have a coat of many colors, but it wasn't quite like we see on TV. But nevertheless, he wore this, 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 this robe, and, and he was sort of, the, if you would, the star child. And so uh, we know that through the word that there were some troublesome circumstances that he began to have a dream. And once he got that dream, he was excited about it. And he kind of went and told his brothers. And they, you know, I tell them they're all going to bow to him and stuff. I can kind of ticked off too. They ended up throwing him into a pit and he was sold into slavery. Big time difference in life. I want you to know that the slave times back then... Prisons then were not like slavery prisons now. We're, we're going to see in the Word in just a moment. Because uh, they did not like to waste any good ground. So they had everybody down in pits. And if you could only think of the stench and the smell uh, of, of what it must be like to be down in a hole. They actually started by throwing him in a well. And then his very brothers sold him and he went off into slavery. So not a good thing. But how many know that we know through the Word in the beginning of the story and the end of the story... He kind of had something on the inside of him that was like styrofoam. Remember as a kid, you'd buy those little styrofoam boards. They're probably illegal now because they make you glow. And uh, you'd buy them and you'd go swimming with them. They're flutter boards. Do you remember them? And I can remember because uh, I don't know if I was a chubby kid or not, but I always try and swim to the bottom of the pool with the flutter board. But then it would always boop and it would pull you back up. Do you remember doing that as a kid? Yeah. No? If not, anyway, I get it. But it was like that styrofoam, you couldn't keep it down. You could try and st I'd stand on it, you'd kind of surf in the water a little bit. Nathan used to do that. But, but I used to do that, and, and you'd always come up to the top. Well, this is kind of like Joseph's life. Something that bad circumstance would come along, and he would still end up being Joseph, or we'll call it Josephing. He would get through his circumstance, even though the circumstance was pretty crummy. Okay? We know, let's look at verse uh, or chapter 39, it says... Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. So this is after he sold into slavery, okay? And, and it says that Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard of the Egyptian, kept, uh, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. The first point you need to get today, because it's not a three-point sermon, but if you want to get one point, is that number one, it's not about where you are. It's not about what you're doing. It's who has you. The Lord said he was a successful man. He's being sold into slavery, and yet God says he's a, a successful man. Now think about that for just a minute here. He's on his way to jail. He's on his way to some, some, some crummy circumstances that he yet doesn't know about. If you look in the mirror, he's going to see today. But it says that he was a successful man because God was with him. The bottom line is, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, 
said the Lord. God will de deliver you out of whatever desperate situation you're in because God is with you. You need to catch that because no matter how crummy your circumstances are, I can't explain to you why crummy things happen to good people. It almost seems like, you know, sometimes the, the more you pour yourself into God, the more difficult things seem to get. I want you to get this because this is, and I, I caught this through a teaching I was studying on this week. The enemy would love it if you would spend most of your life looking back. If you would spend most of your life looking inner, retro, the mirror of the 60s, the mirror of the 50s, the mirror of the 70s, wherever you were, if he can get you kind of like always, you ever ran into somebody and it's always about them, how bad it was, how bad it is, how bad it's never going to change. The problem with always looking back and introverted, you never step out by faith and so into someone else's life because you're trying to fix your own life. Now, Joseph, if anybody said, I got reason to complain. My mom died. My brothers hate me. Come on, his brothers sold him. They put him in a pit. He went into slavery. The slavery was a stinky, rotten mess. It was not like the hotels, you know, you know, prisons and stuff that we have today. Not good, okay? And yet the Lord was with him and God called it successful. Now, I don't believe that God did those things, but I believe that God gave him the tools to get through those things. You need to catch that. Very important because if you find sickness or despair or something really tragic going on in your life, sometimes the religious people say, well, you know, sometimes God does and sometimes God doesn't. You never really know. That's not what the Word says. The Word says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. But God has put tools in you to go through your circumstance. To go through the circumstance and say, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna sit here and wonder why is this going on. God called him successful because God was the center of his attention. If you want to go through your circumstance and be successful, keep God as the center of your life. And you will be like that flutterboard, and you'll float to the top and you will get there. Amen? Amen. So the, the beautiful part is the word shows us who we can be, not what we used to be. Who we can be. Now, I want you to think about this for just a moment. Have you ever met someone that's walked away from God? Okay? The good news is God's mercy is brand new every day. But the Word shows him not who he was, you dirty, rotten, old scoundrel. It says who you are. Who you are. Because, you know, I, I sent a friend a text the other day, and I said, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. And I knew what they were going to do. They sent me a text and said back, they sent a text back that said, don't say that. And really what they really think is they think they're just an old, filthy rag, an old sinner saved by grace. And I said, but that's not what the Word says. You may have been that, but because of Jesus, things changed. Amen. Think about this for a moment here. Because of Joseph, he was part of the Abrahamic covenant. Okay? The law didn't come about. The only reason the law came about was because Jesus said, you stiff-necked, hard-hearted bunch of people. i got to give you this set of rules here to keep you somehow from no, not totally ending up in the ditch. The bottom line is the blessings of Abraham are ours and we're his. Yeah. That's what the mirror of the word shows. Then the better covenant came, which was Jesus that said, because of all of that, we've got something even more available to us. So, look at the word as who you are. Not who you were. Look at the word. If you say, well, pastor, I've kind of, you know, I don't know if I really strayed from God or not. Don't look at who you were. Look at who Jesus says you are. Look at the word as something that pulls you forward. Okay? Um, I've got a friend that uh, we're actually taking this addictions course Wednesday night. It's tremendous. Really enjoying it. And one of the first things they've taught us to come through any form of addiction is no negative talk. Watch what comes out of your mouth. If you want to talk about the past, I was this and I am that. Hold on here. You're going to stay there. Don't do that. Joseph, in the middle of his pit, in the middle of his circumstance, always moved forward. Okay, so let's read a little further. The Lord was with Joseph, verse 2, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house, his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. His master, he, remember, he was still a slave. And God said... You're going to come through this. God said, you're going to have like styrofoam on the inside of you. You're going to whoop, float to the top. Then what do we know what happens shortly thereafter? Well, let's have a look. Okay? So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. And he made him the overseer of his house. And he put his hand, or all that he, and all that he had put under his authority. And so it was from time to time that he made him overseer of the house and all that he had. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. 
and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. I want you to notice this, and I don't mean this in an arrogant way, but because Jesus lives in you, you're blessed. Amen. You're blessed. Do you know that you take that blessing to your job? Do you know that, think about this, he's a slave in the house and God made all, I said it blessed him, so he was blessed to be a blessing. And that's what we need to get in our lives, that God blessed him in the middle of his slavery. Okay. And it came to pass that after these things, that his master's wife cast long eyes on Joseph, and she said, lie with me. But Joseph refused. And then we know what, I'm not going to keep reading on here, but, but the point is, it goes on, and she accused him. There was an accusation against him, and he fled. And the bottom line was, then suddenly, he gets accused, and he says, I didn't do it. And so he gets put in the pit. Now, believe me, if he's going to get put in the pit, it's going to be a heck of a pit. You're trying to take off with his wife, even though he was wrongfully accused. He said that he didn't do that, all right? And so, uh, we'll look at verse 20 here. It says that Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison, verse 21. And the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Now, just do a mind math for just a moment. Potiphar is mad because he apparently made a, a, a pass at his wife. So he puts him in prison. It's like a hole. I was watching... Um, uh, Oh my goodness, what's the name of the movie that was on last night? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay? And, and they actually had a. Uh, <clears throat> did you watch it too, Nathan, at work? And, and so I noticed they were putting prisoners in this hole. And do you see the spot where they started to pull this great big cement slab over the hole to keep them in there? And there were snakes and all kinds of gungy stuff. And I thought, very interesting, because I had just been studying about their, their prison system. And then I'm watching the Raiders of the Lost Ark. And so it was kind of neat. And, and so as I saw what was going on there, I thought, Wow, it really was bad. Because their land was very, very precious to them. So they didn't have big super jails like we have. They had holes in the ground and tunnels and stuff, and you all figured it out. I mean, there was no daylight, it was not good. So he gets sent down there because he puts a because he was accused of hitting on Potiphar's wife. And so it says here that the prison guard, the manager, the overseer, he found favor in his sight. Now that's gotta be God, because number one, think about this. If Potiphar's ticked off and he says to the manager, I want you to put him in prison, and I want you to make sure he suffers and has a lousy life because he tried to hit on my wife. The manager wanting to impress him is going to go, yes, sir, I'm going to make sure that I do that. But it doesn't say that. It says that he gained favor in the manager's sight. That's almost going against the grain because the manager, what's he going to go tell Potiphar, hey, by the way, I've put him head over everything? <laughs> Potiphar's going to go, what are you doing? I wanted him suffering. I mean, he's, he's lucky he's even breathing. But it shows here that the Lord was with this man, even through his trial, even through his tragedy, even through the frustrating time, but God had given him tools to come through. How many know if you don't stop while you're going through something, you're not going to get stuck? Amen. It's a good little rule of thumb if you're a farmer. If you're still moving, you're not going to get stuck. Okay? It's when you get stuck, you make a rut. And when you make a rut, you don't go anywhere. When you make a rut, it becomes a grave. Okay? It's the truth. All right? A grave. You don't want a grave. You want to keep moving. Amen? And so we see here that the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed all to Joseph's hand and all the prisoners who was in the prison. And whatever they did and wherever they went, Joseph looked after them. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and he made whatever he do, did, pardon me, prosper. So we see that Joseph was not going to live in the past. He was moving through into the future, even though he had a past. It was a past that maybe he didn't create. It was a past that maybe he didn't like. But he continued to move on into what God had said was his. Now, I want to show you something here about why bad things happen to good people. Mark chapter 4. Go with me to Mark chapter 4. If you learn nothing other than this verse in this chapter, sorry, part of this, this will really explain to you why bad things happen to good people. Here's the bottom line. There is crummy circumstances going on all around us. And we can choose to embrace it, we can choose to run from it, or we can choose to hold up that mirror and say, oh, but I remember my past. 
I remember my past. You know what? Everybody with a past still has a future. Amen. Now think about that. Everybody with a past still has a future. All right? And some of the things that we're learning through addictions and stuff, I mean, I know it's a secular course, but think about it. Everybody has a future. Today is a choice. Today. The Word says today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Sometimes you've got to, you know, kind of put some oomph in you and say, I'm choosing, you know. My soul magnifies the Lord. Well, what is your soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your soul says, I don't want to do this. Your soul says, I don't want to do this. But your spirit says, no, I'm alive in Jesus. That mirror shows me a future and a hope. Amen. So Mark chapter 4. And... Uh, Just a second. Let me just, it's Mark chapter 4, 14, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I hear Brad on the move here. Mark chapter 4, verse 14, it says, let's look at verse 13. He said, Do you not understand a parable? How then will you understand all parables? So this is in a nutshell the answer to all the parables that God has in his word. Okay? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately to hear the word that was sown in their heart. Now, how quick did Satan come? How quick is immediately? Pretty fast. The sower sows the word. The preacher preaches the sermon. The wife says this. The husband says that. And immediately Satan comes and says, Hey, did you hear that? What's their tone? One of the greatest frustrations I have with texts is that I always misread the tone. Or if they don't text back right away, Adam's mad at me. You know? <laughs> You've got the enemy will do all kinds of things in your mind and say, they meant this. They meant that. I remember when my dad used to do emails, we had to tell him, stop using capitals because it means you're yelling. Okay? So he didn't know that. So everything's in capitals. Maybe it should be in capitals. I don't know. But anyway. But you can misinterpret a lot of things, but the enemy loves to do that. The enemy loves to magnify. And the greatest thing he can do is to try and get you offended. So we're going to look at this. So the sower sows the word. The number one thing is this. The word is a seed. Joseph's life was a seed. Joseph's purpose was a seed. And yet so far, we haven't seen a whole lot of growth. If anything, he's down in a hole. How many know that underground, there could be all kinds of storms above, but the seed keeps growing? Amen? They planted my field the other day, and if I look out there and dug up that dirt, that little seed is right there. Okay? And we need a rain really bad so that little seed can grow. And it can storm and do whatever it wants up here, but that little seed is still there. The Bible says the word is incorruptible. The word, the seed will work in your life. It just may not happen right today. Amen. We we get you know we get panicked because we go, well, we've got to have it tomorrow. No, you just need to plant the seed. Joseph probably didn't want to be in the pit any longer than he needed to be. He probably didn't want to be in the situation any longer than he needed to be. And if anything, it, it, you know, it, it got longer for him. First he gets sold by his brothers, then he gets accused by Potiphar's wife, and now he's in prison and bad things are going on. I want you to get this. You ever growing up, and, and, and if you misbehaved, or something was going on, and you whined enough that somehow... You, you know, mom grounded me, but if you're whining enough, dad said, it's okay, you can go and you can still get what you want or whatever. I want you to understand, God does not move by human emotions. God is moved by faith. Because see, what the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to get mad at him. He wants you to say, how come God only healed one of John's eyes? Or how come my healing almost feels like it's delayed? And the enemy wants you to get bent out of shape about that. But how many know God's not moved by our feelings? I know that sounds bad, but our feelings are a natural thing. Spirit of God is the Spirit of God, okay? And so, because, and, and I, we were blessed. We didn't have, I can remember Hannah having one temper tantrum. She threw herself on the floor. I can remember that one time. I really can't, okay? But that doesn't move God, and it didn't move me. Kind of. But it didn't move me, all right? But I can remember that. Now, God is moved by His Word because His Word is a seed. The one thing it says in Jeremiah, Je Jeremiah, Genesis, I like Jeremiah. The one thing in, in, it says there is one thing for sure, is seed time and harvest. Amen. It has to happen. Yeah. The seeds that we planted this week in the ground, 
the guy that planted them two weeks ago and mine are probably doing the same thing today. They're both still sitting there because they're waiting for moisture. You need to hear this. They're in the ground. When the conditions are right, you can relate to this, right? When the conditions are right, they will both start to grow. But if the conditions are still too dry, they're going to sit there just like they're sitting in the bag. And as they sit there and sit there and sit there and wait for rain and then wait for heat and then wait for sun, and they will grow. Okay, they've actually made a seed now that has a wax coating on it that you can plant early, early, early in the spring and it's almost like a, a thermal blanket on the little seed and it will not melt off the seed till it warms up and once it warms up then it will start to grow. My point is this, seed time and harvest is an absolute fact. The difference is between the sowing and the receiving lots of life goes on in between. Lots of life goes on where you hit your head and go, my goodness, what do I do? Another day of trying to figure this out. And so, you know, we've we, we got to look at Joseph. And Joseph could have had those opportunities. Instead, he said, I'm going to become ruler of a stinky prison. It was. I'm going to become ruler over a really lousy circumstance. Genesis 8.22 is where it says there will be seed time and harvest, if you want to look at that. But let's continue on in Mark chapter 4, verse 15 now. Uh, they, were, they were the ones by the wayside, and Satan immediately comes to take away the word that was sown in their heart. And likewise, the ones sown on stony ground, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And yet they have no root in themselves, and so they endure for a time. And afterward, when tribulation or persecution come for the word's sake, they stumble. I want you to notice here, because since we're addressing religious talk, for whose sake? is Satan coming to steal. The Word's sake, not your sake. It causes you to stumble, but he's trying to pull the Word out of you. Because sometimes we think, well, God's doing this to me for somehow to perfect me. Hold on. That doesn't make any sense. According to this, Satan come to take the, to, came to take the Word out of the person. We get somebody born again. We preach Jesus to them. We show them Jesus and the life of God. And immediately Satan comes and says, I think we better take that gift back. Okay? Ultimately it affects them, but he starts with taking the word out. No word in, no word out. And so that's what happens is immediately he comes to try and steal the word. He tries to erode it. He didn't try and steal, you know, the fact that, you know, you bought a statue for the church. Or he doesn't come and say, well, you didn't attend the spaghetti supper. He comes to say, I don't know if that scripture really applies to you. We saw that in the garden. Did God really say? Did God really say? So we know it's seed time and harvest, okay? So we see that this caused great trouble. How many know the storm can go on above? Is it ever went swimming? I don't recommend swimming in a thunderstorm, but if, you, if you're ever swimming and it's really lousy weather, it's raining and carrying on, if you ever notice it's neat to go onto the water knowing it's storming above, but underwater it's calm. The seed of your life, the seed of the world, will remain calm. Even though the outward circumstances of life can be completely crazy. Amen. Alright. Joseph was declared a prosperous man, even though he was a slave. Well, think about that. That doesn't make any sense. How can you be a prosperous man, but you're a slave? Because he was prosperous on the inside. He was prosperous on the inside. He's a man of integrity. He was a man that no matter mucky, you know the old saying, if God gives you lemons, give, make lemonade. Okay? That does remove the God part. It should be life. If life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Okay? God's not out handing out garbagey situations. God will give you a tool to get through the garbagey situation. He can't. He doesn't possess it. God is good. The devil's bad. Life is sometimes good. Life is sometimes bad. But we're all part of a covenant here. And because the Abrahamic covenant is ours and it's available to us, but because Adam and Eve kind of ate us out of house and home, the earth is still living under the curse, which means if we're breathing, we're still living under the curse. You understand that? That curse, the Bible says the, the curse can't come without a cause. Well, unfortunately, there's lots of causes out there going to try and take you down. And so the enemy tries to get you offended. I had a friend phone me the other day, I mean, believe in God. He's telling me how his friend of a friend of a friend died of cancer. It was a terrible situation. He said, who would ever serve a God like that? And I said, I wouldn't. And he said, what? I said, well, God didn't do that. God doesn't possess that. That's not who God is. I said, it's a tragic situation. But kind of a light went on in his head. He went, 
okay, I'm beginning to see that. Because I said, I wouldn't serve him either. That doesn't make any sense. When these horrible circumstances come along, we start to go, well, God's doing it to sift you and teach you. That may work on one in ten. And if it works so great, we should all volunteer to go through it because we all know that those crappy situations are crappy and it doesn't make you want to serve God. It makes you get frustrated with God. It makes you say, then fully on you. How fair would it be if I treated Hannah and Carly differently? I treat Carly, well, you know, you got red hair and freckles and you got a bit of a temper and you're kind of my flaming little princess. And then there's Han who's easy going. She kind of take it as it comes. And I should be harder on her and easy on her. That doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't do that. You'd say, Carl, stop that. Stop that. Well, somehow the devil might wants us to think that God does that. So God defines success as who has us. Things, sometimes things we go through we don't understand. And Joseph, I'm sure, in some ways didn't understand it. But Joseph used what God had taught him to come through his monkey situation. You've been given the tools to get out of your situation, all right? Vision comes, and you're going to have to fight to keep that vision going. Vision comes, and you're going to have to fight to keep that vision going. Joseph had a couple of pretty big opportunities. I don't know about you and I, but if I was thrown down in a well, and I heard them tearing up my robe and dipping it in blood, and going to go tell my dad that I'm now dead, it'd be pretty hard to pray. It'd be pretty hard to say, God, you're going to, you're, you're going to deliver me out of them all, you know? The word says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. Where is it, Lord? Your life is still like that seed. It's under the ground. It's planted. Keep it planted. Stay firm. Keep watering it. Keep the sun on it. And God will bring you victory. Amen? It's not you that brings the victory. It's God. Okay? Now, God's blessing on Joseph always was coming toward him. And Joseph could have quit. You know, there's an interesting, uh, you, if you think whether it's Judas, or remember the, the rich man that didn't want to give up everything? There was opportunity for those guys to turn that stuff around. We, we sometimes think, oh, God just used them because it made for an amazing story in the Bible. Yeah, it became an amazing story. But don't worry, God had opportunity set for them to make better decisions. You have the tools to make better decisions. You have the opportunity to make better decisions. We all do. But the beautiful part here, and it kind of is something that we got to get used to, God has also given you the will to choose. Choose you this day who you'll serve. Okay? The teaching that says, well, God wants some of them saved and some of them not saved is crazy. It doesn't make sense. Don't serve God then. Don't serve God because that's a crazy God. He's a dictator, foul thing that would do that. God does not do that. God wants us all to serve Him. God wants us all to have opportunity to receive him. Okay? Very important. Alright, so God gave you a vision. God's blessing on Joseph uh, even took him through the crummy times. Now, Joseph says no to Potiphar's wife and it tends to get worse and worse and worse for him. Sometimes it can almost feel like that. Sometimes, you know, they say it's darkest before dawn. Now think about that. Those of you that get up at the crack of noon, you won't know. <laughs> but they say it's darkest before dawn. Okay? Now think about that for a moment here. We hear, we've heard this preached for years. About the time you'd give up is about the time they were just bringing your ship ready to tie it to the dock. Breakthrough is a promise. Breakthrough is true. Today, if you're serving God, you are one day closer to your victory. Today, with these seeds that are sitting in the ground, or seeds of your life that are sitting, whether it's wayward kids, I've got a friend that have got kids that are meaning wayward beyond wayward. Okay? And I said to them the other day, I said, you're one day closer to breakthrough. Oh, but it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't matter. You don't go by feelings. Faith says I have it now. Faith says it's what the Word says, therefore that's... See, there used to be... We used to all have them hanging in our kitchens. It says, the Word of God says it, therefore that settles it. And then we somehow got away from that. If the Word said it, that should settle it. There's going to be... What is that? What has circumstances got to do? Think about this. What has gas prices got to do with God's provision for your life? It doesn't have anything to do with it. If God, if God could do it... like. He says, a grain is a mustard seed. It will grow. 
It has nothing to do with it. The difference is what we do with it. Do you think God is stumped going, oh my? We, there were some uh, classmates that sent me a text the other day that said, um, let's meet for coffee. And so we met for coffee and we were talking about, I was asking them if they thought Adam and Eve had navels. Do you think Adam and Eve had, had navels? <laughs> Belly buttons? Well, they were formed from the dust of the ground, so there's no umbilical cord. We're talking about a cow and a calf, and it kind of proceeded into that. And I said, I think God gave them belly buttons or they would have been made fun of at the beach. Okay. <laughs> well, it's true. Can you imagine not having a belly button? That would be really weird. All right? So, but we were talking, but we were talking about creation and God and, and, and how the enemy tried to curse situations. And so we were talking about all of those things that we need to recognize that the curse is in the ground. They actually say there's enough weed seeds in the ground for the next 50 years. If you, that's why you always have to kill like weeds and dandelions and yep. stuff, because it's all part of yes. the curse. We're living under the curse, if you would, in the natural, but in the spirit, we're above the curse. Amen. Do you get what I'm saying? That's where faith comes in. So, we need to recognize this. Even though you're in the pit, even though you feel underground, but the Lord was with Joseph. And we saw that. Now, why did the Lord put, but the Lord was with Joseph? He's in the pit. He's in, now Potiphar, you know, he didn't fool around Potiphar's wife. He gets sent back to prison, and he had favor in there. You remember in there, and, 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 and he was sort of the head of the prison. And the word, if you read it, it says, but the Lord was with him. But the Lord was with him. You know what? The but needs to be in your life, too. But the Lord was with Linda, right? But the Lord was with Adam and Sessie. There may be lousy circumstances going on, but the Lord was with Gwyn. There may be lousy circumstances going on, but the Lord was with Roger. We need to say that. The crowd maybe doesn't get to say, but the Lord was with us. We can. Amen. We can choose. Today, you choose who you're going to serve. You have that free will, free choice in your life. All right? Now, the word but is in there, I think, also to show us that the world or people would have done something differently. All right? Think about it. We're going to go tonight. You guys are all watching because I haven't been eating carbs. Okay? But the Lord was with Carl, and he took his bun, and he didn't eat it. And he had just the hamburger patty. That's referring to everyone else that's going to enjoy their hamburgers, which is fine. My point is this. Pat Bureau made a wonderful spread for everybody. Really good food, and everybody really enjoyed it. But Carl didn't eat carbs. What I'm trying to say is this. Your life can stand out from the crowd. Your life has vision. Your life has future. The world may be doing one thing, but you can do another thing. Do you get that? You have that choice on the inside of you. You have that vision on the inside of you. But the Lord was with Joseph. I want you to notice, though, even though the Lord was with Joseph, it kind of didn't get any better. Still in prison. About that still in prison still going oh my you know look at this this is kind of like Joseph here for a minute dry crusty old dirty ground and somehow a flower can grow up okay but the Lord was with Joseph but the Lord is with you mark 4 shows us that when bad things happen the Lord wants to turn us to turn to the word and the sower sows the word <clears throat> The sower sows the word. You can be the sower today. You can be the sower. Joseph was the sower in his own life. He gets put into the prison. He meets the prison guard. I imagine they treated him pretty bad because the prison guard is going to want to impress Potiphar. But suddenly something began to shift. And maybe Joseph greeted them with a smile in the morning. Maybe Joseph cleaned up after himself. Maybe Joseph, you know, was, was pleasant to be around. And the shift came when suddenly he began to get favor. The Word will work before you. The mirror of the Word shows us what we can have in the future, not what we had in the past. That's why the Word says He will restore the years that the, the, the locust and the canker worm have stolen. Amen. Have stolen. Come on, if we're all truthful, we have had opportunities in our life where we have been stolen. We have been ripped off with a big R. Ripped off. Okay? <laughs> And the enemy, the Bible says, when a thief is found, he has to restore sevenfold. We can choose to believe it, or we can choose to not believe it. Guess what? If half of us act on this today, that's half. The other half will make a choice to say, mm, not for me, mm, not today. Mm, God doesn't want me to have it. You have that choice in your life. But the Word shows us 
that the Lord is always with the word. And when stuff comes in your life, keep being like Joseph. Think about that. I don't know if I could have handled going to prison twice. I don't know. I don't know if I could handle that. And the rejection of his family. And then think of the time. You keep reading the story. It's a pretty cool story. Carly acted in the play there at the lighthouse years ago when she was a little girl. It was amazing to see it in, in like a play form. Because he went through stuff and pit and tragedy. We don't even have a clue of how gross and dingy it would have been. And then, remember he was king and they had all the big grain uh, vaults because there was a famine in the land. And then he noticed his brothers were coming. And remember he'd have to go away in the tent and weep. Imagine what that would feel like. Yeah. Because he wanted restoration. Yeah. He wanted to be one with his family. He wanted to tell them who he was. But it wasn't the right time. How many know that when things don't happen just quick enough for us, understand this. Delay does not mean that God is not going to bring it for you. Delay does not mean that God has left the building. He's not like Elvis, okay? God is on your side. God is, and you know, you got to get this too. We are not blessed based on what we do. We're not blessed based on, on our works. We are blessed based on what God has done at the cross. Amen? It's not about what you deserve. Because if we're all truthful, we were, you know, it's funny, we're all like debating on sin the other day, right? Some sin's bigger. Well, that guy stole money, and that guy, you know, slept around, and that guy swore, and that guy... Sin is sin. Understand that. And we are not without sin. Based on Jesus, we are righteous. Based on the Word, we are righteous. But grumbling against your neighbor is as bad as going up committing murder. That's the truth. So we don't get what we deserve. Thank the Lord for that. We get what the Word says is ours. Amen. That's why he said boldly come. Bold. But you gotta, you almost got to energize yourself to believe that because your mind says, are you kidding? You didn't pray long enough today. Don't you dare ask. Are you kidding? You didn't read the Word today. Don't you dare ask. It's not about that. It's what the Word says is yours. So, keep Josephing in your life. Keep believing the covenant. Keep believing that you are blessed to be a blessing. And there, that's a little nutshell and then I'll close. You need to live your life making somebody else's life better. And when you do that, it feels so good. And before you know it, you're turn around and go, hmm, my situation got fixed too. My situation got fixed. God doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He's not lazy. He's not tired. Oh, my goodness, I had a rough night. Don't ask me to do anything today. <laughs> He's working on your behalf all the time. Guess what? Those seeds that are in the ground today at my farm are getting ready to work. They just need some water. And once they get that water, they're going to grow, grow, grow. It always amazes me. I used to, I can remember driving out there when we first started farming, driving out there to the back of the field after five days, I'm going, there's no way it came through that hard clay soil. And you'd look, and there'd be a little green field there. And the little flowers all go, hey, we're here, we're here. Because there's a seed time and there's a harvest. It always amazes me. To this day, it amazes me. But maybe our seeds have been sitting dormant because the conditions haven't been right. Mm -hmm. Maybe our seeds have been dormant because, you know, whatever it is, the, you know, we, you need to water. Water with the Word. Speak over it. Believe God. And it has to come. You may say, but Pastor, life has gotten ahead of me. No, hold on. You're still breathing. Wilma's mom is a perfect example of God being good to her. Well, unless you're she 103? 103. So unless you're 104, guess what? you still got time for God to be good to you. Oh, seriously, think about that. I'm not even trying to make it funny. It's the truth. If you were 82, we studied that with Long Life at Bible Study. And that lady there that wrote, um, I don't remember the word now, but she lived 120 years old. Do you remember that? She didn't start doing God's best in her life. She'll tell you that until she was 66. Do you remember that? She was 66 years old. And she said, I'm going to do what God said. And she planted that seed in 120 she lived to, and then she passed away. Okay? There's a, it was a famous song, but it, it slips my mind for a moment. But praise the Lord. Joseph continued to believe. Now, get this, and this, and then I will close. If the situation gets harder, God will give you special acts of kindness to get through. But the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph was in a pit. Joseph got wrongfully accused. Joseph got thrown in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. You see, 
God's not doing those circumstances, but God will show special kindness in your life to help you get through. To help you get through. You understand that he's not the author of confusion. He's not the author of fear. He's not the author of death. But God will give you grace. He will give you strength. That's why, you know, when God says, my grace is sufficient for you, he used to say that, Paul, get rid of your thorn in the flesh. My grace is sufficient. It wasn't meaning he was supposed to just put up with it and live with it. God was saying, I have given you the tools to change this. To change this. Amen? God has put tools on the inside of you. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Watch the soil of your heart. Be careful that you haven't become a hard-hearted person. And the beautiful part of that is, if you have, just surrender to Him. Say, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name, forgive me for having a hard heart. Soften my heart. And the miracle of God will bless you and set you free. That's what God designed for you. And if your seed's been sitting dormant, and then the last thing here, don't move the seed. Okay? If the seed's planted in the ground, stay put. All right? Because if you keep transplanting the seed all the time, it won't grow. you got to catch that. It's true. You know some Christians, if you ask them where they attend church, they'd have to pray in tongues because they don't know where they attend church. But you need to be planted because once you're planted, you'll grow, grow, grow. But if I go and dig those seeds up, that little root tears off and it won't grow. Right. Okay? So that's, now you all know how to grow soybeans and, and grow. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's awesome to preach your word. We thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that if we put you first, we thank you, Heavenly Father, not by might nor by power, but truly by your spirit, Father. We thank you, Lord, that the vision on the inside of us is to go forward. We thank you, Father, that we're not going to chase our tail and go back to where it was and go backwards of what the mirror used to say. We thank you, Lord, we're going to keep on keeping on. We thank you that God is truly on our side. Amen? You remember years ago, you might show your age here, but you remember in the 70s those keep on trucking mud flaps and a great big foot? Do you remember that? Keep on trucking? Yes. That's what God has for you. Keep on trucking. Amen. Keep going forward. You are dismissed.